You'll have to excuse me that from time to time I might have to do this. Just to keep my voice in working order. In uh, September 2000, I think it was September or October, somewhere there, I stood up here and told you about the uh, diagnosis of uh, prostate cancer that had been made. <clears throat> and uh, since I want this to be a day of praise, I just want to fill you in on what's happened as far as my cancer is concerned and my medical uh, treatment. Um, <clears throat> I asked the specialist uh, at that time, how long do you think I've got if I don't have any treatment? And I hopefully said, what, 18 months, two years? He said, no. He said, about three months. Well, <clears throat> that's when I presented to the church the situation, and it looked pretty grim then. But the Lord had other ideas, and um, he very, very quickly got me an appointment with one of the leading oncologists in Auckland and one of the best in New Zealand. Uh, it usually took about three months to see this man, and I saw him in three weeks. And uh, he uh, indicated that there was surgery was, was not an option and that the only option that he could give would be radiography, radiotherapy. And here again, there was usually a six-month waiting list before you could get into the, the program at um, Auckland Hospital. I got in there in, I think it was about two months after that. Had six weeks of radiotherapy, came home every weekend. And um, we were on hormone therapy at all, uh, as well at that time. And it was through God's blessing that uh, life continued, and it continued very well. Uh, in 2005, I stood here, and we had a, uh, a, a message, a, uh, a morning of praise, because that was the fifth year. And if you last five years in cancer treatment, this is consider, considered to be, by the medical profession, a successful result. Well, that was in 2005. I still had no intention of dying. And so we went on. And uh, uh, in 2007, I think it was, I was given the option of going on a medical trial with a medicine that had uh, been developed in the United States for the treatment of prostate cancer to try and stop the metastasis into the bones, which was the usual thing that happened. Metastasis is where the original cancer uh, spreads into the other parts of the body. And uh, you can get little growths of that cancer all around the body. The usual course of events would be that the prostate cancer would go to the bones in the spine, in the hips, in the upper legs, and uh, then into the other organs of the body. That had not started. And by the way, the, the measure of the degree of cancer growth in your body is determined by a little medical test called the PSA. You should know this. Uh, the PSA uh, measures the prostate serum albumin in your blood, which indicates how much your body is fighting against the prostate, um, the prostate cancer. Uh, I started off at 14, which was a high level. Uh, and after the radiotherapy, it went right down to, to zero. Uh, less than 0 0.1, they say, and that's not measurable. And it was like that for a few years. <clears throat> but um, around 2006, 2007, this PSA started to uh, uh, go up and go down. It went up to 19, it went down again, it went up again. And uh, this is when I went on the trial because they wanted to put people on the trial whose PSA level was varying uh, to see if it would result in any way in stopping the metastasis of the cancer. <clears throat> I've been on that uh, trial uh, now for, what was it, 84? 83 weeks. And uh, I've been taking that medicine every month. <sighs> and... 
this, I believe, has helped me out. The thing that, however, I believe has helped me more than anything else is the effect of prayer, the intercessory prayer of yourselves and other friends that I have around the world. I'm getting calls from Australia, um, from folks who have heard about my plight and have been praying for me. It's the blessing of the Lord that's kept me alive. The doctors have been helped by the Lord, but here I am, eight years since the original diagnosis. My, my specialist said to me two months ago, I never ever imagined that I would be speaking to you eight years after your original diagnosis. Well, I praise the Lord for this, and because I want you to praise with me, I wonder if we could sing number four, hymn number four, uh, a song of praise, which I'm sure you'll all know. And if you like to stand, stand. If you like to sit, sit. Let's sing praise my soul, the King of heaven. indeed praise the Lord Psalm 100 shall we turn to Psalm 100 just for a moment I'd like to just go through Psalm 100 the praise psalm <clears throat> Psalm 100 make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands serve the Lord with gladness come before his presence with singing we've done that this morning we've come to him with singing know ye that the Lord he is God it is he that made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into the gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with singing. Acknowledge the fact that the God knows us and he's interested in us, in us and we are the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving. 
into his courts with praise. Be thankful and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. I say this morning, praise the Lord for his goodness and for his kindness to us. The children of Israel had many times to praise the Lord. Think of the praising that they made after they went through the, the, the Red Sea. They sang together. Miriam led them. When the ark was brought back to Jerusalem, David led his people in praising the Lord and dancing. Well, we've done the praising, we've done the singing, we won't do the dancing today. <laughs> Maybe someday our church will get in to know what dancing to the Lord means. David danced before the Lord, he praised the Lord. And um, this was in thanks for bringing the ark back. Think of the praising that would have been uh, that would have happened after the lepers were cleansed. Think of the praising after the paralytic was was uh, was uh, uh, given his 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 health back. Think of the praising that the family would have made after Lazarus came forward from the grave. We can find many many things to praise the Lord if we only but sit down and think. The praising, the thankfulness, the celebrations when the prodigal son came back. The angels of heaven uh, sing with glory when a person makes the decision to give his life to God. <clears throat> Turn to Matthew 21 now, would you? Matthew 21. I want to... Very briefly look at the story here in verse 28, I think it is. Yes, Matthew 21 and verse 28. We'll read just a little. <clears throat> but what think ye? A certain man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second son and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father? They say unto him, the first, Jesus saith unto him, Verily I say unto you that the publicans, have I left something out there? Verse 31. Whether of them twain did the will of his father? They say unto him, the first, Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. I think we as Christians should be as good as our word, don't you? Here was the example of two boys. One said he would, he would not go and work in the farm and later on he did. And the other one said, I wouldn't, I will go. But he didn't. I think we should be people of our word. We could turn to Acts and hear the, read the story of Ananiah and Sapphira. You remember this is the time when the new church was getting established and as people wanted to, they would sell their houses and their properties and they would give it to the church as a gift so that the church would have the means to develop. Ananias and Sapphira had made up their minds that they weren't going to give the whole thing, the whole amount of money to the church. And when they came to Peter, they gave him so much, and Peter said, was, was this the whole price? And they said, yes. Uh, Ananias came in first and did this, and immediately he was killed by the Lord. Swift justice. And they took his body out and then his wife came in. And the same thing happened. They asked her, was this the amount of money that the, the land was sold for? And she said yes. And then she also was killed straight away. This story, I think, was told us so that we would know that we should tell the truth. We should be genuine in our telling of the truth. Um, Matthew 5 and verse 37 says, Let your yea be yea, 
and your nay be nay. I think this is trying to tell us too that we should be truthful. We should be genuinely truthful, truthful in our Christian lives. If we turn to Matthew 7, there's a little story there that I just want to look at briefly. Matthew 7 and... Uh, We'll start at verse 20. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from ye, f depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I would never want to be one of those men or one of those people who do things in the name of the Lord but are not genuine in their own Christian experience. The Lord is telling us here, that you not only have to try to do the good things, but you have to honestly love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And if you do that, the Lord will accept you. There were ten virgins in the story, in that parable, and they all had resource to oil for their lamps. And that, of course, we understand to be, represent the Holy Spirit. We all have the ability to have access to the Holy Spirit. We can say as many times as we like that we have the Holy Spirit in our lives, but if we're not genuine in what we do or what we say or what we plan... We might be one of those people that the Lord will say, I knew you not. Those five virgins who were not ready were not genuine in their Christian experience. We have to be genuinely ready in our minds, in our hearts. We have to love God with all our mind, with all our soul, with all our strength. And he will accept us as his children. And... Uh, at this time, I want to, uh, if I can find it, thanks to Kevin, yesterday. <laughs> I, I, when I was a youngster, I, I had a, an autograph book. And one of my teachers wrote in that autograph book a message for me. And uh, I knew it was a quote from Shakespeare, and I didn't know what book it came from. And I wasn't quite sure about the... the um, the uh, the lines uh, uh, how they came in uh, after one another the, the sequence of the lines and this is what they wrote and I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year this is a New Year's resolution thing and I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year and this is where um, Shakespeare comes in put your hand into the hand of God and let this to thine own self be true. And it must follow as night the day. Thou canst not then be false to any man. Have you heard that statement before? Thou canst not then be false to any man. And I want to change it just a little. I want to say, thou canst not then be false to God or any man. And I think it would behove us to remember that our attitude to God, our acceptance of him, has to be genuine. It has to be heartfelt. Just let me find where I am, and then I can continue. I believe that this is a truth which is all important to us as Christians. 
I think it is very important that we praise the Lord, that we thank him for all the blessings that he's given us. I think it is all important for us to have a genuine love for him, that we should love him with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our strength. We should have a sincere belief. I have a sincere belief that the Lord has answered the intercessory prayers of you. I believe that is the intercessory prayer of this church and others that the Lord has seen fit to lengthen my life until today. I thank you for this. <clears throat> and it's been good for me to associate with you as a brother in Christ in his church here in Wangarei. And, and I just hope that you will just take to heart these very simple messages today. Let your life be one of praise to God and make sure that your love for him is genuine. Because the Lord looks on the heart. You remember when Samuel went to um, David's place and he saw these tall, strong men, this is the king? No. The Lord told him that he was looking on the outward appearance. The Lord has the ability to look on your heart and he knows whether you are really genuine or not. Somewhere in here, I wanted to have another song. Number 12. We haven't sung number 12 yet, have we? Let's sing number 12 and be joyful in our singing at this stage in our sermon. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. And here again, if you want to stand, stand. If you want to sit, sit. Be comfortable. But sing joyfully unto the Lord. Thanks, musicians. When Elijah was on the Mount Carmel with the 400 priests of Baal, and I don't know how many God worshippers there were there, Elijah didn't know either. But his question was, or his approach was, if Baal be God, then worship him. But if the Lord be God, then follow him. And when he said that, the people did not answer him. 
They answered him after the sacrifice was accepted. But I want now to go to another scene where Joshua is talking to his people and he's saying, Choose you this day whom you will serve. And he said, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I think Joshua was genuine when he made that decision. And I just hope that you, each one, will make today a renewed, genuine decision to love Jesus Christ, to accept his sacrifice, to genuinely look forward to that everlasting life. I don't know how long I've got to live. You don't know how long you've got to live. But my urologist gave me an appointment the other day for six months' time. I don't know whether he genuinely thinks I'm going to keep it or not. (laughs) But our lives are in the hands of the Lord. And uh, you've probably seen my name in the prayer list. Please keep praying for me. Uh, Let's sing the glory song. If you praise the Lord and thank him for all his kindnesses to you, if you are sincere in your decision to follow him and to accept him as your saviour, you're going to end up in heaven in the same place as me. And I would like you to be my neighbours. Let's pray. 
Oh, Lord, praise your holy name. We rejoice today, Lord, in your goodness. And we just ask that you will help us to be genuine in our love for you. Keep us in the hollow of your hand, we pray. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.